to to get started with our SaaS, that is software as a service. First, let's let's look at its definition. Let's pick up something. Maybe I think this should be best one. Software as a service is based entirely on internet and it is an approach to software distribution by which software providers host a combination of servers, database, code to create applications. So uh, let's take an example of a software provider. We can say SaaS provider who is creating a product and who wants to market that product to the open internet or to a wider audience. The audience can be organization or individual users. If it is an organization, then we call it as business to business. We is suppose we have built a SaaS product. We as a business want to sell to another business, then we say it as business to business. So that is B2B model. If we are building our SaaS product for consumers, not for companies, then we see it as B2C model, business to customer or business to consumer. So these are the two major models that are part of this SaaS. So one popular example of SaaS is our Microsoft 365 portal. That's a complete SaaS service. So if you must have looked at the office.com and you go to apps, all apps. So basically this whole Microsoft 365 is a SaaS product from Microsoft. And SaaS are built on a subscription basis. If suppose uh, you build a product and you want to charge your users or customer based on the usage, then they'll be billed either monthly, yearly, or based on the usage that happens on the application. Yeah. So this complete Microsoft 365 is one of the best example of SaaS product. And it contains multiple products. So these are all the applications that are part of Microsoft 365. And each of them have its own license to use. So if you go to Office Microsoft Admin 365 Admin Center, you can see all the licensing options regarding that uh, Microsoft 365. And this is a place where we get built for the services that we use. So these are all the SaaS products from Microsoft. Yeah. So now let's start building something on the Azure stack. So we can either go with, let's uh, try both the cases, that is B2B and B2C. So let's say Microsoft Identity Platform. So this is one of the starting point. If you are developing your SaaS application for a multi-tenant organization means if you are developing it for different companies or yeah, different companies and most importantly, different Azure AD companies. We can say a uh, different Azure AD tenants in technical term. If you're developing this for another Azure AD tenants, your SaaS product, then this can be your starting point. That is Microsoft Identity Platform. Here you will find all the samples to get started with. If you're developing a single page application, then you have the options for Angular, React, and JavaScript. And one more is Blazor WebAssembly. And if you're developing not on SPA, that is single page applications, then you have another options for .NET, Node.js, Java Spring, 
and these are the another set of options. And so let's get started with the web app and specifically ASP.NET. This is a very simple architecture. This is your web application. And this is a web, yeah, this is a web application. And this is the identity platform. In this case, it is Azure Active Directory. So whenever any customer comes to your website, logs in, they get authenticated with your Azure Active Directory account, and it sends an access token to the web application, and it validates the access token. And based on that access token, your application performs so many operations like Microsoft Graph, getting the user profile, performing any operation on behalf of the user. Yeah. So this is authenticating with your Azure Active Directory from your application. So let's start. Uh, I think the best example would be. Yeah. So best way to get started with this. The Visual Studio is automatically configured to connect with the B2B model that is Azure Active Directory for authentication. So if at all, for example, I select this as the template ASP.NET Core Web App. And let me give my SAS B2B. And next, in order to configure this for the authentication, you have this dropdown. Select Microsoft Identity Platform. In this, when you select that, the application will get configured for the customer to authenticate with your Azure Active Directory. And let's let's not configure any Docker and create. So in order to make so I'll just uh, use this option. Do not use top level statement. Uh, this is uh, a new syntax, not syntax, the structure of code that has come up after .NET 6. And uh, after .NET 6, they have added this option. So if you need namespace and uh, the import statements along with those flower brackets in your C sharp code, then you check this option. Else, you do not check this. So as soon as the project is created, it will ask you to create app registration directly from your Visual Studio. There are two options. Either you ha already have a uh, app registration, then you can connect it directly here. Else you can create a new one directly from your Visual Studio. So it's easy to create it directly from Visual Studio and configure it with your application. So let's create it directly from Visual Studio. OK, so once you have logged into your Azure account on Visual Studio, you will see your existing app registrations. You can choose any one of them or you can create a new one. Let's create a new one. And let's give it the name as the same name as our application. OK, and that's next. Yeah, so if at all you want to allow access to Microsoft Graph API, you can add the Microsoft Graph permissions from here. Else, you can another option is if you want to add permissions to another API, for example, this is your web application registration that you have done just now. And if it wants to communicate with a API app registration, then you select this option. 
And if at all you have that API project, just select that and configure it. Since we only have one project, that is web application, we do not have an API project, so we'll not be going ahead with this option. So let's uh, give permission for Microsoft Graph permissions in order to read the user profile. And it will create the client secret and client. Yeah, it will create the client secret automatically for you from Visual Studio and store that into the local secrets JSON. And also, once we configure this Microsoft Identity Platform, it will generate code in your solution, like add necessary uh, code in program.cs file. The first uh, piece of code that it will be adding is to read this secrets.json file if it is a local environment. And also it will add a few statements for the authentication purpose. So let's finish this. So I'm not sure whether it will create a single tenant application or multi tenant application. We'll see once we log into the application. Yeah, so let's go to program.cs file. And this is the statements that it has added for the authentication purpose. So and another one will be, I think. Um, no, that is not added. But yeah, I think it is internally configured to use secrets.json. OK, so here we have few configurations that it has put. Like what is the instance? The instance is how user will be logging to your Azure AD. This is the host URL. You must have already seen while logging to Azure or any Microsoft uh, product. And this was this is your instance. And after this instance, your domain name will be coming like this. And after domain name, your tenant ID will be coming. So currently all of them are uh, separate. It's not combined as a single URL. Uh, I think tenant ID will not come since domain is already there. So next will be coming client ID equals to and this is your client ID. And after that slash sign in OIDC. So basically it will use all of these parameters to generate a URL and lo start logging in. Okay. And another one. So here, see here, it has given only single permission that is user dot read. That means who is a logged in user. I can read their profile. Okay. And what else we have? It's a very simple Razor pages web application. And here is a very simple web page. And it's C sub code. So here what it is doing it. Yeah. So once user is authenticated, it will just try to get the user profile using this code. And it will just show their display name. OK, let's run this application. And before that, let me also show you the app registration that uh, this particular application has created. So we go to Azure Active Directory, go to app registration. Let's sort based on the created date. My SAS. So this is the application that it got created. So let me first check. Uh, if it is a single tenant or multi tenant. OK, so it's a multi tenant application. Accounts in any organizational directory and personal Microsoft accounts can authenticate. So what all configuration it has done? It has done this many configuration like adding the redirect URLs. Redirect to URLs means when user is has completed sign in, they'll be redirected to this particular URL. 
and it has also created a client secret. If at all you want to create a new one, you can select this option. And since we had selected that uh, uh, graph permission, right? So it should be present somewhere here. To view manage consented permissions for individual as well as for tenant consent, try enterprise application. OK, that's fine. And if at all, it is accessing uh, another API, this particular web application, then you need to assign that scope here. Currently, it is not. OK, so I think as you saw are the main ones. And see. So when I'm trying to log into this particular application for the first time, since I am the admin of my organization, so this option is coming for me. Consent on behalf of your organization. If I'm not the admin, then I'll not see this option. And only I'll see this consent. Basically, it will ask me to uh, give consent to retrieve my profile from the Microsoft Graph. And if suppose I click this option and accept, that means I am consenting on behalf of my whole organization. And if one of my colleague is trying to access this application, they will not see this consent page because as an admin, I have consented on behalf of whole organization. If I want to consent only for myself, not for the whole organization, then I can select accept. And Next time, if my colleague is visiting this web page, then they will also see this consent page because I have not consented on behalf of my organization. So I'll not log in using the same JDBots account. Let me log in with another account. OK, so this is my developer account. Let me log in with this one. So selected user account does not exist in tenant JD boss and cannot access the application in the entire. OK. OK, so I believe there is some issue with the multi tenant. Okay, let's suppose if I access it from here, what happens? And here it is coming. For D right? Yeah, because this account is already part of that organization. Let me try some other organization. Hmm. Yeah, so it is not completely uh, multi tenant. You can figure it out what's the issue. Okay. So let's accept that and let's see. OK, unable to resolve service for type Microsoft Graph service client. OK, let's reload the page. Or restart the application. I think it took a lot of time to because I took a lot of time to consent. There is some issue with the Microsoft Graph. Unable to resolve service for type Microsoft Graph service client. So service. I don't know. I think this Microsoft Graph is not registered here. What I'll do, let me create a new this time without graph so that we do not waste time in configuring the graph. OK, this time I'll not select any option and let's click finish. Maybe the template is not ready to configure with graph. OK, let's start the application. Except. OK. So it will only read my email address, nothing else, not even my personal name because we are not using graph, right? And this time let me also get logged in from another account let's see if that works uh, 
Ah. Because I am outside my server. Let me try with this one. Okay, this is fine. Let me quickly configure ngrock and verify if it is a multi-tenant application. So what server this is running on? Uh, what port? 7197. What was the command for HTTPS? ngrock HTTPS and the URL. Now, let me see if I can access that home page. Nope, so same issue. Selected user account does not exist, so it has to be added as a invited as a user okay so that means it is not the complete sas solution as a multi-tenant so these are all the samples for the sas solution and the best one is here so the first one is only authenticating with a web application and connecting it to Microsoft Graph. The second one is authenticating with the web application as well as its own API. So this is the best one to get started with. Okay. So this is the perfect example for B2B SaaS solution. So now let us also explore, if time permits, we'll just set up this one. But before that, let us also explore the B2C. If at all you have uh, your consumers not only on your Azure Active Directory or their own Azure Active Directory, if they are on Google, Facebook, or LinkedIn, GitHub, so there are like various authentication provided. If your consumers are on that platform, they are already using those authentication methods, then you can connect your application with those authentication method in order to authenticate. So that is like B2C model, business to customer, identity as a service, and your customers use their preferred social enterprise or local identities account. That means you, they can just create their user account on your web application, or they can use their existing login identities from external identities. So these are a few of the examples. Twitter, Facebook, Google, Microsoft. Okay. And these are all configured inside a B2C tenant. So to get started with this particular implementation, we create a B2C tenant and then we create app registrations inside that b2c tenant just now we saw how we created a app registration inside of azure active directory that is b2b and for this to work we create a separate tenant how to switch tenants so here we can switch tenants so for example here few of them are already created and this is one of the b2c tenant Yep, and it has its own subscription if required. That will be required, but uh, for certain limit, 
the B2C is free, but after that limit crosses, you need to connect your uh, subscription with this tenant. And it is just like any other Azure Active Directory. Just the only case here, all the users who sign up to your application will get registered in your B2C tenant. So these all users have registered in your application and their entries get created inside your B2C tenant. So that's the only thing here. And, and let me show you the app registration. So here, there's a few of the app registrations that are created, similar to any other Azure Active Directory app registration. The only difference that you will see, uh, I think not here. So for B2C app registrations are created from here. Azure ready B2C app registrations, new registration. And I think, yeah. Yeah, I think this is the option that I was seeing. Accounts in any identity provider or organizational directory for authenticating users with user flows. So this option we have already seen in our B2B where we had these two options, single tenant, multi-tenant. And now we have another option. In any identity provider means I can connect it to any external identity provider, Facebook, Google. And for that, using that users can authenticate. I can select from here identity providers. So these are the list of all the identity provider that are available to this B2C. Okay, so let's again see the samples that are part of this B2C. And I think this should be the good example. Yeah, this this is a good example. Wood Grove Groceries. This is a sample application that Microsoft has created. And it contains all the major models like B2B authentication, B2C authentication. If I click on sign in, so here I have individual customer sign in with your personal account business consumer that is b2b model and partners that is b2c model uh no no uh, that's wrong i think the second one is b2c and this one is b2b let's quickly verify uh okay the third one yeah third one is b2b because that those are partners in B2B business uh, gets registered and inside business users will be assigned access to the application. And these two are B2C. And this is their authentication page for this particular application. And here in the good uh, thing about B2C is it provides a very good login page in order to validate the user's email ID. So if you provide their email address, the B2C model will send, uh, specifically Azure B2C, will send a verification code to validate the user's email ID and create a new account for them. set up signing so this is the complete documentation where we can set up the sign up or sign up and regarding the samples here are a few samples and let me give specific page where you can find all of them 
that is under integrate apps. Yeah, this one's. So similar to our Microsoft identity platform, here also we have single page application, JavaScript, React, Angular. We have web application, .NET, Node.js, Python. And we have web APIs, mobile apps, desktop, WPF. And the samples are also part of the Microsoft Identity Platform. Here also you can see the B2B samples. Here. Sign in users B2C. Call graph multi-tenant. So every all the samples regarding the B2B and B2C can be found here. And in any language that you prefer. So now let's try to set up this particular application that we were looking at. Yeah, this one. Web app, your API. In this case, this is a B2B. And what will happen here? We are not only uh, adding security features to our web applications, we are also adding security features to our web API. And uh, let me see if I have the architecture diagram here. Yeah. So, here. So this is your web application. User will come here. They will authenticate with the Azure Active Directory. Azure Active Directory will send the access token to your web application. And your web application will use that access token to call the web API. Again, it's a .NET project. Web API will validate the access token, whether it is coming from the authorized source, validate that, and use that access token to call Microsoft Graph APIs and return back the results back to the web application. And okay, let's set up this one. Uh, is there anything to get started with? Let's start from cloning the repository. That's nice. This is a nice uh, intelligence in this new terminal. And we can also use multiple tabs for our terminal. That's also good. Maybe a new feature Microsoft has added. OK. And what's the next one? CD to our application. Cannot find path. OK, let's see what is the path we have. OK. CD. Microsoft identity and next is code web four dash three to do to do list service. Okay. Register the sample application in your tenant. There are two projects in this sample. Each needs to be separately registered in your Azure AD tenant. So the earlier we only registered the application, web application. In this case, we'll be registering both web application and API. So follow the steps below or manually register your apps or use PowerShell script that does that. Okay, this is a good one. 
automatically create Azure AD application and related objects for you modify the project configuration file. I think this is a good thing for us that will save us time. On Windows, run as admin. Okay, I am uh, running on the admin. So we need to set the policy. So this policy is required. You might have seen. Uh, if you get any error while running PowerShell script that uh, it is not allowed to run, then we set policy to allow the scripts to run through PowerShell. So this is that command. And it is recommended to revert this policy back to the state where it was. So run the script to create. Uh... So let's cd to this one. Where is this part? Let's go back. LS. App creation. App creation scripts. Yeah, this one. Okay. Next, configure PS1 tenant optional your tenant ID. Okay, this is optional. Let's try this one. So for the multi-tenant application, the tenant ID is optional. So we need not provide the tenant ID. So uh, for multi-tenant, the tenant ID is common. That means uh, any organization. Okay, okay. Le le I now I got it. So let me open my last application. I think yeah, this was my last application. I got the mistake. Why it was not authenticating with the other tenant? This was the issue. Here we have specified the tenant ID. In order to, in order for this to work, we have to just write common. Now, if I run this application. Now I can now other people, other organization can authenticate. I think if this will work, then I don't think we can. We should continue with this one. It's just the advancement of the same application. Yeah. And. Let's see if this is working. OK. The application has still not started. OK, now it should be fine. See here, uh, cannot access the application. This should be common. The URL is still not updated. So if I just write common here, I believe this should work. Let's clean the solution and rebuild it. Before going to other organization sign up, let me first sign up to my own organization. Let me sign out. Okay. Let's try if this will work. Yeah, 
now you see now automatically the tenant id is now replaced with common and now you see here now it is asking me for the permission since i am the admin of this organization so i'll uh, i'll have to just i can consent on behalf or i can just accept so it will not work because uh, redirect is not set to this particular ng rock url but uh, yeah it has authenticated i need to set this url in azure active directory currently the redirect url is my local host i have not set the ng rock url as my redirect url so let me set that even the other application wouldn't have worked the first application that we configured right even that would have worked we just had to change the common no 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 i think the issue with that was with respect to graph okay no problem so let's add a redirect ui let's see if this should work it might take some time like 5 to 10 minutes for this to for this changes to get in effect okay now it is working see here now this has been redirected to and here is my email and i can just so now it has become a multi tenant application and even the personal accounts will work for this so let's see i haven't tried that yet and here for the personal accounts this is what we see as the consent message now one important thing here is uh, if I go back, so I'll log in to my Azure Active Directory with this account and show you the application that is registered there. So my application will be now available inside the customer's enterprise application. So this account as a customer, now I'm trying to log in to my Azure Active Directory. I'll go to now enterprise applications. And here you see the my SAS 2. And here you can see all the users who has authenticated with this particular application from your organization. And you can assign the users so that uh, the next time they log in they will not be consented to they will not be uh, shown that consent screen to read the profile you can assign those users from here and also it is possible to assign the roles as well to those users if at all your application has multiple roles you can assign them currently uh, we only have default access, but yeah, if you have something called as admin, uh, developer, contributor, user, you can assign those roles. And based on the roles, when the user is trying to authenticate with the application, they will only see the data with regard to their role, not any other. Yeah. So this is on the customer side. So. JD boards have developed the application and now this customer has authenticated with the application and now they will see the application inside their enterprise application. So this can happen from any user of the organization. If at all you want to limit who can add the enterprise application, like who can authenticate with the third party application then you can do so from the admin center. So from here, I think somewhere. 
on somewhere here it should be present yeah authentication context um i seen some x somewhere here user settings yeah this one so here you can limit users can add gallery apps to my apps no and set up three default and users so they can access third party no and somewhere also yeah this page sorry this is the page yeah so here you see control uh, when end users and group owners are allowed to grant consent to applications so here user consent for applications do not allow user consent that means only admin can allow the users to access the application at this if this option is selected allow users to consent means any user in my organization can log into this application if i use this option that means only verified publishers so on the consent page you should have seen that message that unverified publisher that means i am not verified and if you select this option then only admins can allow access and they can grant permission through the enterprise application roles like who needs to access that application so this is the best option to get started with and let's say So yeah, I think that is all for this SaaS solution, B2B, B2C. Okay, any questions?